So good day to everyone and welcome to Social Selling Wednesday. We are here every Wednesday at 11 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific. However, that converts to your time zone is uh, is, is more than appropriate. Uh, we're here always talking about social selling, sales in general, as well as business and, you know, God knows what else is going to come up, especially because we're going to be uh, asking you for your opinions as well, either in chat or you can actually take the uh, seat that is available right now. My name is Bob Woods. I'm the executive vice president of coaching and training at Social Sales Link, as well as um, social business uh, specialist at People Links. Um, first, well, happy gentle. Uh, Kurt Shaver is here too. Wow, that's great. I invited him er earlier today. So, um, Michael, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Thanks, Bob. It's Michael DeGroot of At Staying Alive UK. I'm chief storyteller there. And like Bob, involved with LinkedIn, social selling, and whiteboard animation. And just want to say for everybody on the record, it's Bob's birthday. So, <laughs> happy birthday to you, Bob. Thank and, you. Uh, many happy returns. Thank and you. Kurt Shaver. Wow, that's amazing that he's on the call. So we'll get him on, I'm sure. Yes, if, um, if so he wants to take video. that seat, he's 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 more than welcome to do so. Normally the person in the third seat there, Ped, uh, Ted God, I can't talk today. Ted Pedromo, he has no voice as well, although I just have fumble voice today. He has no voice because of allergies. So he is going to be hanging out in the in the chat room today, uh, chatting it up with, with you all and, and kind of playing uh, chat coordinator as well. Ted is a uh, noted LinkedIn author and coach himself. He also does uh, LinkedIn advertising as well, which is, um, which is is which is definitely something that's out of my wheelhouse. I don't think Michael does it either. Either. Uh, so, uh, but 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 LinkedIn for advertising can can definitely work. I've seen it work before with uh, clients. So, um, with that in mind, um, let's go to uh, the first part of our show, which is anything new that we've noticed on LinkedIn this week, because uh, things change all the time on LinkedIn, as as uh, users of the platform know have uh, noticed. Now, I haven't noticed anything in, in particular, but uh, Michael has noticed something himself. So, so why don't you go ahead with uh, with some of the uh, details about that, Michael. I'm going to have to make a note what we mention each week because... Yeah, that's true. Did we talk about being able to like comments that people have shared on your post? No. Week? Well, you are now able... So if someone has shared a comment on your LinkedIn post, and I first noticed this on mobile, on the mobile app, you can now like that comment. It's only nice. been like 20 years before we got yeah. that or something. <laughs> like it is, I mean, Facebook has had it for how long, but uh, is it now, now is that mobile and desktop or just mobile? Yeah, yeah mobile and desktop. So wow. I, that's awesome to have that facility now at long last. So I'm delighted about that. So that's what I noticed, and I think it's a really key thing, and you know, people really need to maximize on that. So you don't just – okay, sometimes we don't always have time to write a full comment to somebody yeah. in response to their comment. Right. <laughs> but at least we can like what they've done. You know? Right. So there's a little bit more, another level of engagement, and I, mm -hmm. I'm pretty pleased about that. Yeah, so I mean, as as social sellers, we would we would ideally want to do um, more of a comment, but but there's two situations where you wouldn't obviously where, where what Michael mentioned, and I would also say, I mean, you know, sometimes there's just that comment that's out there that you're just kind of sitting there going, okay, I do, you know, like the comment, quote unquote, but I really cannot think of anything else to say. I mean, once upon a time, you used to have to really struggle if if if, if you were doing, you know, what, what you're supposed to be doing properly to come up with some kind of comment to it. But now, I mean, and 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 that's great news. I, I actually hadn't known that until a couple minutes ago. So that's something that I'm going to check out on my end, because I don't know if that's one of those things that they're rolling out slowly or if they just rolled out to everybody at uh, at once, basically. So um, that is good to hear. Um, Ted, I don't know if you can uh, type in anything that you've noticed. I personally haven't noticed anything different this week, so I don't have anything to contribute in terms of uh, in terms of this uh, in terms of 
the new things on LinkedIn. And obviously, Kurt, um, I got one type or talk. Why don't you come on in, Kurt? So we're waiting on Kurt to, to come in. So so basically, as I said before, one of the things that we have uh, is um, is just noting new things in, in the past week or the past couple of weeks. Good morning, sir. How are you? Hey, I'm doing good. Is 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 this so? I, I this is my first ball, uh, blab. Is is this going to work or do I need to do? This? You are um, no, Sounds that's cool. fine. Sounds good. That's okay. fine. We're not we're not getting feedback or anything, so that's right. good. And and okay. if you can hear us, that's that's perfect. Okay, cool. Uh, so hi, all these hey, famous, what's all, going all on? These, all these famous people I've communicated <laughs> with on LinkedIn <laughs> over the years. Yeah, fantastic. no, this is great. This is fantastic. great. Fantastic. Uh, thanks for inviting me, Bob. Sure, sure. Um, it's not a problem. So hey, I, so I was going to mention two things. So so one thing, you know, I always just like pointing out like these obvious things that we're all doing on LinkedIn that that really lead to something. All right. So the only reason that I'm here on my very first blab is because I I was doing a I was doing a webinar for people in Asia last night at 9 p.m. Pacific. So midnight Eastern yeah. time. I was right. doing a live webinar for people in Asia. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know the way the the way the LinkedIn clock works Bob popped up as having a birthday today, even though it wasn't it wasn't quite Wednesday to me, but it was Wednesday to everybody from New York East, right? Right, which is how LinkedIn's clock worked. Mm -hmm. So, so, so you popped up in the uh, in the little birthday things there, and I was just doing a demo. Actually, I was just rifling through the you know the demo of the mm -hmm. keep in touch, and you popped up, so I sent you that little thing, right? And then that triggered. A dialogue between us and you said hey i'm doing this blab come check it out so yeah. uh you know so i like to point that out to people because like you never know where a conversation that that, that keep in touch thing it's also this is an excuse to connect right like we we i don't think we i think we spoke once on the yeah, phone yeah, right once, but most yeah, of the communication yeah, has been, once, has been linkedin ago. but again just those little birthdays promotions work anniversaries everybody thinks they're stupid but if they you know if they trigger something that ends up happening right then you never know so that that was sort Absolutely. of the aside um here's the new thing i learned <laughs> yesterday <laughs> which uh i have no idea if it's the same today but um so I, i'm kind of walking these people through these different features and i'm 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 showing them people you may know and who viewed your profile okay, okay? and i'm showing them those two features as possible sections on LinkedIn that you might want to use to grow your network. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I pull, you know, I, I, so I pull up, um, I got to think which one it was. So I pull up who's viewed your, your profile. Um, and, and I believe, unless I'm wrong, you guys can all correct me. I, I believe that it both who's viewed your profile and people you may know, you know, it always has their pick, their face and that big giant blue connect button, Yep. which, which I always used to say, don't click don't, on that. That's a trap. On. Yeah, that's a yep. that's a trap. It's going to take it's going to automatically send the default message. Right. 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 Probably all do that. Yep. yep. So I, I was like showing this to them live. I was setting it up. I said, don't click on it because here's what's good. And I found somebody that I sort of didn't really care about making a bad impression with. <laughs> yeah. And I said, let me show you what happens if you just click on the blue connect. And this was in people that viewed your profile. Yeah. yeah. And I clicked on it, fully expecting it to say that invitation has been sent. And it took me to the dialogue window to indicate my relationships and write a custom message. And I said, what? Wow. I've been using this 10 years. I've never i've never seen this i i told i told him i was totally surprised because linkedin is actually doing what it should do wow. but what it's never done for 10 years that's yay, a, yay. that's well, one of the things that yeah, we hopped on this morning we, yeah so then i said this is crazy so then i went over to and i i asked everybody online to confirm it and they said yep 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 that's how it's working yeah, for them I, I said, I've, oh, just tried it. I've just tried it uh, what did it do yeah it goes to the Goes to the page that says, "How do you know this person?" Oh yeah. yeah, like it should. 
Yeah. yeah. Yes. But, but it doesn't do that on, on people you may know. People you may know, it's still the same trap. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So they're so they're getting there. It's it's it, it's funny <laughs> when um uh, uh, when Bryn uh, Tillman and I were talking to to LinkedIn a couple months ago about improving their their platform. That was one thing that we just we absolutely harped on them to do is to have more availabilities for for customizing connections in other places besides yeah. the um besides the profile because that's what we teach too is to uh, you know do everything yeah. from the profile. That's the only way that you're going to be able to do yeah. what you need to do now 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 if you bob if you can just convince them to not hide the custom written message from the receiver yeah then then then, then it would actually encourage people to write more custom messages yeah 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 it's a it's it's a slow process and there's a lot of uh, tech mm -hmm. tech layers and uh bureaucracy layers to work through there at LinkedIn, as you could probably mm -hmm. imagine but uh but uh we are shouting as as loud as we can about these types of things what what is the point that you just made kurt about hiding the message okay well you know uh so so i, I think people receive invitations to different they may receive it in their inbox and they may receive it by actually going to the browser LinkedIn app. That's right. But if yeah. you're in the browser LinkedIn app and you go up to your little plus sign silhouette where it says, um, uh, you know, invitations and you're yeah. accept and you're accepting invitations, it, it does not, it does not say, mm -hmm. you know, it does not say, Hey, Michael, I heard you speak at the social media conference and I was right. really impressed. You don't, you don't see, yeah. you have to hunt for it. It's hidden. Yeah. You got to click on that mouse, icon. Yeah. mouse over the little. Yeah. It's uh, actually two steps bubble. away from that. Yeah. It's two full clicks away from that to even discover it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's nuts. I mean, yeah, it, was, it was better two years ago, right? When you just saw the person's message. Right. Yeah, so was... now the, there is one change to that personal message where previously, if you accepted that individual, if they had written a personalized message or even if they hadn't, that message was no longer visible anywhere. Right. So, yeah. right. So, I remember that. But last week or the week before, they did change that. So if you now go to the person's profile, and look at the relationship tab underneath the header tab. Okay. You will mm -hmm. see the original message. And it so might it, be the standard like one. Or on a logical communication string. You got it. Yeah. Yep. So that is a change which is really positive. Okay. <laughs> so they're thanks. slow and coming, but they are coming. It should have been there from the beginning, but yeah. okay, it's finally coming. Yeah, I see, you know, we um you know, once uh, and and just so you know, Kurt, we try as much as possible to focus only on the uh, positive about LinkedIn here. But every once in a while, there's a little bit of uh, grinding and gnashing of teeth going on when it comes to uh, 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 some of the things that happen there. So, mm -hmm. um, but we try to stay positive, and that is and and everything that we've talked about are definitely positives. So that's good. That's good. <laughs> that's very good. So um, what we do now is. Um, uh, uh, generally, the hosts here, and 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 feel free to participate in in this occur too. Um, we have like one thing that we like to to talk about each week when it comes to LinkedIn and and social selling. So um, so so I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here a little bit, but if there's just like one 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 kind of talking point that you generally bring up with uh, with people when it comes to LinkedIn and, and social selling, um, uh, you can go ahead and address that. Or, you know, if you just want to just hang back and watch us talk about it, that's, that's fine too. But, um, so do, do, do we want to do like a basic one or a deep dive one? You can go either or. In fact, um, mine is going to be a bit of a deep dive. I don't know what Michael is doing, but, uh, we like deep dive here. Okay. So go ahead. So okay, so uh, so one of my favorite little deep dive techniques lately is um, is actually diving into the likes and comments of a post that's drawing a lot of responses 
in your area of expertise. Okay, so um, so you can either go s search out those people, right? I mean, you could you know, like in the social selling world, like you either like go look at what Coca Sexton is posting, right? For example, right? Or, mm -hmm. or you can just look at your homepage feed and wait till you see something that has like eighty five likes on it, right? That's that's around your topic. Yeah, then, yeah, absolutely. Then just click to expand either the likes or, I mean, the comments are richer, but the likes mm -hmm. is a bigger number. Sure. Um, and, and and then just use that as uh, either a network building or possibly a prospecting technique because, oh. you know, because the, the, the I mean, the people are self-identifying themselves. I mean, all of us are going to be looking at social selling topic, but your topic could be supply chain management. Your topic could be HR. Your topic could be cloud computing. So whatever, right. whatever the thing is, whatever the honeypot is that's attracting your people. My point is just, just if you click on the thing that says 35 likes, a big list pops up and it shows you everybody's like picture name and headline, which usually is their title anyway, which makes it easy. It's bad, but it makes it easy for this process. Sure. And then, um, you know, and then you can just go down the line and, and say, you know, they're interested in that topic and you can connect with them or you can prospect to them or whatever. So I, so the point is just, you know, just turn up, uh, just turn over the rock because there's prospects or connections in there. That's interesting. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, Brilliant. yeah, definitely like that. As long as you personalize what you're doing and and you know making sure that it speaks to them and maybe even you know adds value to whatever it is that they like to or right. you know, yeah, you're talking yeah. about likes there. Yeah, I mean, and you even have built-in context, which is important for that invitation. Anyway, you even have built-in context. I mean, you all you have to say is like, "Hey, I noticed you like Coca Sexton's post on Social Selling Index. Since we're both interested in that same topic, let's connect." Right. So, you, so you have immediate context. Right. Uh, you don't have to think too hard to conjure it up. Do you, yeah, um, you don't have to spend too much time reading their profile and right. find something you've got in common. Exactly. And, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. faster and it means it's more direct. It's more current as well because people immediately will go, oh, yeah, that's fine. You know, they click accept. It's, it's not right. a problem because mm -hmm. you immediately connect to something that they are already talking about. Mm -hmm. Right. I agree. Yeah, fabulous. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so Kurt, I'm sure that you've used this be before yourself, and you know, I'm not asking for any specific metrics, but just off the top of your head, what type of just overall conversion, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 percent, or whatever, do you do you see from that type of message? Do you think? Uh, if it's a if it's a um, invitation to connect. Um, it's very, it's very high. I mean, I, I, I am not tracking it, but I'm, I'm right. Yeah, I just want to say stuff up your saying, head. You know, it's right. it, it's seventy percent. Okay. Um, and and up. And again, I think I think probably one of the points is the one that Michael pointed out. I didn't even really even think of, but um, it, is the current how current it is. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah that's that's cool. definitely a good point. That's cool. That's very cool. That's very cool. Okay, Michael. Uh, uh, you are up and bad as we would say here. In okay, well, I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to show sure. it on screen if I can't. No, nope, I'm Oh, not. it just, it just ended. Okay, can you read this? Uh, up a little bit. What do you do when you don't get a response to your in mail? That's an okay, interesting question. Okay, this was a question I was asked uh, yesterday when I was doing a talk, and the individual actually has outsourced all of their LinkedIn activity to a social media company that hunts down connections, relevant connections. So they're doing, so they have a premium account. They, they do all the research in terms of the right people they want to connect to and they go connecting. Right? Okay. They immediately jump in and make connections. He didn't say his success rate, you know, whether he was getting all of the requests that he was asking for. He didn't even say if he was personalizing it. Mm. But uh, he said, what do you do if I don't get a response to my in-mail? And I said, how quickly do you send your in-mail after you've connected? Or are you sending it before you're connecting? Or right. yeah. he, wasn't What's really, the he wasn't really that sure because somebody is outsourcing some of this. And they haven't detailed their, their process to him. Yeah. And okay. he said immediately, right? Okay. So... So there's no 
So I'm, I'm not going to answer the question here, but I just want us to kind of debate it a little bit just to, because all of us will have a slightly different view of this. So their basic premise was that if they've connected to somebody, they immediately sold them or sent them a sales letter of some kind. They immediately yeah. said, this is what we do. How can we help you? And he was yeah. surprised he wasn't getting any response to that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not. <laughs> I'm definitely not. I cannot tell you how often that happens to me. And it's just, I mean, I, uh, I'm i at the point where I just kind of let it go because I figure at one point, um, you know, I may, I may need to reach out to them for something, God knows what. But, um, you know, I'm not going to kind of antagonize them by, you know, by bringing up, you know, you know, why are you doing this? And, you know, you know, uh, choking them through my through my reply, basically. But um, yeah, I mean, I I personally never never do that type of thing. What I when I do a uh, or, or when I approve a connection, I I've I've got a couple of scripts that um that that usually offer something for for free. That's also a direct download, so they're not you know so I'm not asking them for information or anything like that. It's truly just a gift that I give to them, and then you know we and and then wherever the the relationship goes from there, it, it goes from there. But I am I'm never selling in that um in that initial. In, in that initial thank you email at all. Just very much unlike so many that I've been getting lately. What about you, Kurt? No, I, I, I agree. I mean, one of the things I say is people freak out about LinkedIn, right? It, it's it's no different than regular old selling. I mean, you, you, you've got to build some relationship and rapport mm -hmm. uh, and, and all those things, right? I mean, it's kind of like the classic joke, you know, the guy doesn't walk right into the bar and walk up to the woman at the bar and say, do you want to get married? Right there. There's got to be a little bit of uh, courtship kind of along the way. And, and so it's the same thing that LinkedIn, I think sometimes maybe people just get so excited that they connected with their prospect, you know, right. they, yeah. they sort of uh, pounce on them a little bit too quickly without building a little bit of a relationship. So I think that's just something we can all work on and, 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 and try to have some, stage of providing value and understanding needs and doing a little bit of listening and that type of thing. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess it just, so one of the things that, I mean, when people do activities like that, I don't think that they think that they're doing anything wrong, but yet obviously they're doing something wrong. So, you know, part of the times I kind of blame them, but, and, and, and this is kind of a thread that comes up often, uh, just, um, just in talks here. Sometimes it's actually LinkedIn's fault because they're not, I mean, it's not like they should be setting expectations necessarily, but they should at least be, you know, guiding people to, you know, for lack of a better term, the, the cool way to do things versus the not cool way to do things and, and, and sending that sales letter immediately after a connection definitely falls into that not cool category. So, um, you know, we, we always say, you know, Hey, LinkedIn, we're, we're available to teach that stuff if you want. But in reality, um, you know, for as good of a platform as LinkedIn is and and all the good that that it does, it does kind of falter when it comes to a lot of things. And one of the things is just some, you know, just really basic education and the how to's on to do such things. Uh, but at the same time, that's why we're here. So, you know, yeah, so, so that's good, too. My magic word is trust. And that is. You know, people do business with people they like, know, and trust. Yep. So they don't like you yet. They don't know you yet. <laughs> they don't even trust you yet. But it's the only thing you can shoot for is start developing a little bit of trust. Mm -hmm. If you go in with the sales letter from day one after the connection, you break down the trust instantly. You yep. might as well just have picked up the phone and made a cold call to them. Because it's it's no different. It's it's you know you're in, you've already interrupted their day by asking to connect to them. They've already had to do something to accept your connection. That builds a tiny bit of trust already, right? 
So when you've built that tiny bit of trust and you send a sales letter immediately the next day, you've just destroyed it. And there's no way back from that very often. So there has to be a lag time. And I know this is when you get into perhaps, you know, some sort of CRM system to support you with that, or even an Excel spreadsheet. Right. Uh, we're putting dates against names or whatever, mm -hmm. but you've got to, and you know, once we get some tagging that we can use, uh, again, maybe it might be useful to tag stuff, but you need to just be patient and nurture that individual. And as mm -hmm. Kurt says, do some listening, do some liking, do some commenting, do mm -hmm. some, you know, engaging without being in their face mm -hmm. before you then share some piece of content of value and strike up some sort of other conversations. Right. Um, uh, you know, for sure, do we know all of that's going to work? No, it won't work all of the time. But in my experience, you, you know, you could get, certainly up to the 30% success rate if you do it properly. Sure. Absolutely. So I, I think that, I mean, it was really interesting and telling that, and there were many other people sharing examples where they get these, like you, uh, Bob, you, the people mm -hmm. get these approaches immediately after the connection. And nothing is more off-putting, you know. And the other thing that I've been experiencing lately is I'm getting emails from news through newsletters after they've connected to me within a day of mm. connecting. So they grab my email, add it to their newsletter, <clears throat> immediately send their newsletter to me, and I'm going, seriously? Yeah, I didn't ask for this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I yeah I've been getting I, I I've I've been getting that like throughout my my LinkedIn. Career, which goes all the way back to uh, 2003, basically. So, I mean, I've seen that. That unfortunately happens a lot, and um, you know, there's just no real way around that. I guess. I mean, you know, it's not much better than you know going to a website and scraping off email addresses that you see on websites, essentially. Except, you know, there's that uh, supposed extra layer of, of of connectivity that's supposed to be happening, and yet people just use it just just for straight, you know, straight you know, out marketing blasts. If we met somebody at a networking event. Fine, we might exchange business cards, so we've got each other's emails now, right? We don't right. pick a newsletter out of our jacket pocket and go, mm -hmm. would you like my news, my sales letter or my <laughs> newsletter? Yeah. You know, and I think people forget that when you're doing some stuff virtually, it is actually no different if you were standing opposite that individual. How would mm -hmm. you treat them? You know, how would yep. you... How would you speak to them? What would you ask for? What would you want to give? And basically, it's how can you help them? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the most important thing. Yep. Hey, you guys, yeah, you guys reminded me of something. Do, do you want a pop quiz? I, I, di I, I didn't know the answer to this when a client asked me yesterday. Do you, do you want to see? Yeah. If you, oh, yeah. Yeah, you let's absolutely do this. A little test. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> so the, so the uh, client, was, um, client was doing a bunch of uh, like social... Uh, campaigning to like warm people up in advance of, of ultimately wanting to make an outbound telephone call to them, right? So they were they were connecting with a bunch of people and doing some of the things we're talking about, but eventually they wanted to pick up the. Yep. And uh, yep. so <laughs> they um, and so they asked me. They said uh, they said, "Hey, can I?" They said, "Can I get my?" You know, if I'm connected to them on level one, which is you know the highest level of privilege and all that. Um, they said, "Hey, can I get?" my level one connections emails like in a spreadsheet and i said uh i i, I said uh oh, that's a good question i i don't know i said i know you can export it and i know you can get emails which is what michael's point reminded me of i said mm -hmm. but i don't I mean i know people have telephone numbers in their profile but i don't know if that exports let's see so i had to test it yeah right you know the answer it doesn't. I think, yeah, I think I. I think the answer is no. My it point. doesn't. No, it, it doesn't. It doesn't export it. You're, yes, that is correct. It doesn't. Yeah. Even even though there's like seventy two columns in that. Yeah, I know. I know. It's the most ridiculous there's thing. That, you know, you you have the fax number <laughs> of the person's assistant's dog. But, yeah. Um, 
but yeah, yeah. but pretty much, it's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. There's maybe seven or eight things. It's like, you know, first, last name, email, industry, company. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of things there that it's like, there's no way that my own CRM would capture this. Right. Why Why are they, uh, you know, wh- wh- why are they sending all there's this stuff out here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of, uh, and, and a lot of unfilled fields too, yeah. except for email. I, it's just, yeah, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. That's a funny story. Well, a funny I, story. I, I asked LinkedIn tech support about it, and they and they said, you know, that that they just said, well, no, it's not in there, and that basically telephone numbers are like a private thing, and they don't, you know, even if even if you're connected to them on level one, that they don't um, export that. So mm. there we go. Mm. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, you know. That's a decision they made, but why include that in the 71 other fields too? I just, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's, 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 a, it's 1130 right now. I uh, just want to remind everyone that our chat is still open. If you have a question, go ahead and pop us a question in there. We would be more than happy to answer it live for you here. So uh, my one thing is um, revolves around the whole birthday thing again. And, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not trolling for happy birthdays or whatever here, but it has to do more with the, with the personalization aspect of, of birthday notes. And that's where the whole thing with, uh, with a Kurt comes in too. But um, for me, and it's interesting that you mentioned the, uh, the at times um, of, of, of when you start seeing birthday things, because it, it was interesting for me yesterday, I, and my birthday is today. Um, I started seeing birthday wishes like starting at like 4.01 Eastern time. And it just hasn't stopped basically. So, I mean, while it's good and everything and I don't mind it, I just thought it was interesting that it seems that for whatever reason, my birthday um, announcement or whatever you, you want to call it with, within LinkedIn. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. That's nice. <laughs> I envy people who can who can do art just like that on the fly because I'm definitely not one of those people. I write, I don't do art. So, um, so uh, anyhow, so I mean, just that in in and of itself is interesting that it that it hit at four. But um, but then you know you start getting the the, the messages and um, a vast majority of them are the generic happy birthday thing. You know that that uh, that a LinkedIn populates there and i you know i definitely like the fact that people care enough to 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 pop in a happy uh birthday and that's fine for 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 normal people but when it comes to social sellers i definitely think that a little bit of personalization is is important because as of right now the happy birth the the generic happy birthdays don't stand out in my mind at all except for the one that my brother-in-law sent and he used a generic one so that one hurt a little bit but um <laughs> but uh but anyhow uh, <laughs> but um you know so i got a couple of uh minor customized ones and i can actually tell you who who those people are because even though they just added a, a word or two the fact that it was customized a little bit even stands out there too and then um and then you had some more that were even more personalized. So uh, one I got from a connection from India actually says the world was never the same uh, when you were born as your friend. I'm glad that day happened. Happy birthday, my friend. Live long and prosper. So that's actually a little Indian and a little Vulcan in there too. But uh, <laughs> um, but uh, but 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 that was uh, cool. And then and then. Um, Besides Kurtz, which we'll get into in a second, um, John Craig, who's a sales engineer in industrial and electrical products, sent me something that was a happy birthday, and I took it as a compliment, too. So he sends me, he says, happy birthday, need more content, thank you, because I haven't published content in about a month or two there. So obviously, this guy reads me, and he thinks enough of me to actually happy ask birthday. more content. Hey, yeah. Happy birthday. Get to work. You get to work. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. What have you been doing? Yeah. yeah. What are you, you been doing, on vacation man? Or down, what? Get down the cake and get and start writing a blog, Bob. Exactly. So 
So that was actually very cool. I, I, I took that as a compliment. So, um, and, and then, you know, there was like one or two that came that were actually kind of marketing messages. One, one had a link to a book giveaway, which was okay. But then it took you to a landing page that, that, that collected de demographic information. I'm like, I'm not going to do this. So, uh, you know, that one's, yeah, that one's definitely thumbs down. And, um, and then I get the one from Kurt, which I thought was was very interesting and a very cool way of doing it. So I'm going to toss it over to Kurt so that he can explain it, and then also give and and then also tell people what you say for each day of the week based on you know when their when their birthday falls. Oh yeah, okay, thanks. Um, so uh, I mean, again, I, I think I mentioned earlier that I just I love that keep in touch feature. I think it's it's great for for her triggering things and giving the excuse to connect with people you wanted to connect new, but too many days go off the calendar and you forgot. So birthdays is certainly one of the best ones. And so um, so what I did, as Bob said, so I wrote a custom tiny little message for every, for each of the seven days of the week. To be honest, I usually don't send them on Saturday and Sunday. I try to give myself and my connections a break. But, um, but I have them for, for all seven days of the week, right? So my thinking is that, you know, somebody might have 500 connections. And that, as you just indicated, you know, maybe like 2% of the people actually go to the keep in touch and they click on the default. So maybe 2%, 500, right? 10, 12 people send them the default message, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not bad to be in the upper 2%, but you know, wouldn't right. you like to be like in the upper 0.02% by sending something right. custom as you just said. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so I've got one for e every day of the week and they're super simple, but what, but when I copy it for Monday, of course, if I have seven people on Monday, I just, you know, I just open it and paste, open it and paste, open it and paste, open it. And paste. So seven people get what they think is a custom message. It's custom right, to yeah. them. It's not custom to the other six, but it's custom to them. It looks different than the other 12 that they received. And right. Yeah. And they're, and you know, it's just a simple there. They basically all play off the same thing. Like if it's Monday, it says, Hey, Monday birthdays are the best. Uh, uh, I hope you started celebrating early and celebrated all weekend. Right. Or yours is on Wednesday. It said, Hey, Wednesday birthdays are the best. Uh, break up the week with a party. Or if it's right. Friday, it yep. says Friday birthdays are the best. You got all weekend to celebrate, right? So they basically yep. all say whatever day is the best. And then there's some reason, mm -hmm. whether it's the beginning, <laughs> middle, or end of the week. And uh, mm -hmm. so again, it's just, you know, just a little custom message that they're okay. not going to be buried among their t 10 or 12 happy birthdays. Right. And it and it stands out because it's it customized. So it's, uh, you know, so it's just another opportunity to take something that, quite frankly, is very personal to people and just, you know, make make them feel uh, better about themselves and, and their birthday. I mean, because, quite frankly, sometimes people don't like their birthday. So hopefully a message like that will will definitely make them smile a little bit. And then in the case with just me and Kurt today, even though we're 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 first degree connections and we've kind of connected on and off um, uh, uh, throughout the, the time when we've been connected, it started a conversation and and he's here now. So I mean, you know, this stuff really can work. This stuff does work. I mean, with, without a doubt, that this stuff does work. Well, and, and 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 before you speak, uh, Michael, because I know you have a te te technique. Tad actually has a technique too that he put in chat. I just want to bring up really quick. He says that he asks people, "Are they doing anything fun for their birthday?" And a lot reply and tell him about that too. So 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 there are all different types of ways. Michael's going to tell his way in, in just a second, but there are all different types of ways to customize it that don't take a lot of time, and yet can get conversations started and and who knows where those conversations are going to go and that's what social selling is is all about so michael why don't you go ahead yeah i and i don't necessarily ask this question all the time but i do think of asking a different question when i can i'm only concerned with um the fact that i'm, I'm gonna have to change it every year <laughs> <laughs> because you know next year i don't want to send the same question but right. for now for this year the question i ask people is you know do you mind sharing the best present you got on your birthday yep and just to get a conversation going not always everybody responds i don't know maybe they don't want to admit to the best present <laughs> or they're worried that somebody's going to see it you know the answer mm -hmm. or yep. whatever but 
Yeah, and there's some interesting dialogue that starts and a little bit of a conversation that gets going that way. So that's usually quite a cool way to get a little bit of engagement going. But sure, I, I love all of these ideas. They're just brilliant. Yep. Hey, Bob, I, want, I wanted to mention yes. something on this topic that I that I suspect will get all of you experts going right, which is, um, <laughs> you know, so the so the way I do it now and the way I suspect, you know, some of us do it here is. So I have a Word document, right, where I've got all these things and I open up the Word document and I scroll to the right spot and I copy mm -hmm. it from that and then I paste it into LinkedIn window. Wouldn't it be nice if there was a little library function in LinkedIn for templates that we could write for our own style of custom messages? Like yep. Michael has his question of the year and Ted has his, what are you doing for fun? Um, you know, just to spare our fingers on the keyboard a little bit. Have you asked LinkedIn for a custom library template? You know, that came up once. I don't think that we pushed that one as much because we had bigger fish to fry. And actually, and Bryn, Bryn Tillman has something that I think is a um, that's like a Chrome plugin. I don't yeah, remember the yeah, name of it. Text. There's there's a lot of text right. Yeah, text. so I mean, so that makes text, it a little easier expander, in that you're not. Yeah, yeah, text expander. That's it. Yeah. So I mean, so that makes things you know a little easier than waiting for for Word to boot up and you know blah 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 and all that type of stuff because at least it's yeah. it's it's a browser. But I do agree that. Um, that having LinkedIn provide that type of thing would be would be fan fantastic. I just don't know if a lot of people would would use it. So at that point, you know, I'm sure with some of the stuff that we suggest, LinkedIn kind of sits back and says, "Well, yeah, sure, that's good for you know sales and social sellers, but you know what what percentage of those people are are involved in LinkedIn and you know and and I'm sure they've got metrics for for that." type of thing too so you know they're obviously trying to appeal to a bit of a wider audience so you know they may go well well it's nice for that crowd maybe maybe we'll do it in sales navigator but i'm not so sure about the uh the broader platform and ted says he uses text expander so yeah so uh, so if you're looking for for the kind of functionality that that kurt says and i've been meaning you know i'm writing this down right now because i've been meaning to do this for the longest time i'm going to take that plunge today text expand there so i use something called alfred you come across alfred alfred okay yeah it's an app and i create snippets in alfred and i've got to remember the short code for the snippets that's the only thing <laughs> i've got quite a yeah. lot of snippets you have a short code and you you just add you just kind of depending on what search you have on your computer or whatever sure um and you just search for it and you, you just copy and paste it and mm -hmm. the cool thing is it adds it immediately to your clipboard so the next message you get to you can just you know command v and it will just paste it again and again and again so right that's, that's a pretty cool app I've also noticed that sometimes that I'm I'm a kind of Apple Mac and iPhone iPad user. Yep, so, so if you use the keyboard shortcuts uh, and you've created them on your iPhone or iPad, mm -hmm. they will translate on the Mac as well. So that's sometimes you can create a keyboard shortcut and it will you know kind of be there somewhere. Right. Yes. Yeah, how it works, but magic. I, I've I've made it. I've managed to get it to work. Sometimes I'm not sure what keys I've pressed, but that's okay. probably a bit hit and miss. But yeah, um, but oh, that's I, cool. That's good to know. It would be an, an awesome idea to have that as a functionality inside, even if it's not on the main LinkedIn. Certainly on Sales Navigator, yeah. where you want to be doing that kind of mm -hmm. better stuff there too. Social Ben says that he uses Evernote across um, iOS devices. That's you awesome. know that's probably yeah. another very good, good one too. And Evernote's another one of those things. I've got this list of like things that it's like I knew that if I had more time, my life would be better. But I don't have enough time to make my life better, so I really don't get to those types of things yet. So um, time management. Time management. Yeah, I kind of I kind of suck at that. So anyhow. Um, so we've gotten all of that done here. Uh, 
Um, Michael, why don't you talk about what's going on in that in that fourth window? It's something that we've set up here, and uh, and hopefully more people will, will take advantage of it. Yeah, so there's a lot of buzz going on, I believe, about Slack. Um, so, and, and if you haven't used it, go and check it out. A very good productivity tool. Very good. But also helps groups that are working together to avoid multiple emails and threads of emails and, and collaborate inside Slack. Mm -hmm. The functionality in there is awesome. They've got lots of apps and you can... You know, you can have plugins all over the shop. But basically, uh, you're also now able to have a community on Slack. So yep. use it as a community tool. So what we've done here, we've set up a community in Slack that if you're a Slack account holder, you can just follow this link on this fourth window. And if it's below here or up above me, I don't know what it's going to end up like in the recording. Right. But oh, yeah, that's if true. If you follow yeah. the link, just sign up or sign in to your Slack and get onto the community. And let's carry on the conversation in between our blabs. Let's ask questions, share some ideas, techniques, tools, whatever. Um, these can be good fun and, and yeah. um, they Slack can be, be a lot of useful. fun. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, yeah. So, and again, it's an that. experiment. Sorry, yeah. Bob. It's an yeah. experiment. Let's see how we get on with it. Right. Yeah. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm on, I'm on, a, you know, a, um, a, a social sales uh, a group, and and I'm on a group for for people links. So I mean, you know, I'm I'm on there every day, no matter what, anyhow. So, um, so cool. So yes. Yeah, so, so let's try that. Let's see what happens if we can build it into something that's really worth something and where, where everyone benefits. Then you know, hey, that's fantastic. Uh, Social Ben did have a quick question that I wanted to get to over in chat, and and I'll throw it open to everyone. I definitely have my opinion on it. Let's see what everyone else has to say, though. Do you think LinkedIn will bring back open APIs? <laughs> so yeah. So um, any any thoughts about that? Well, I'm not a I'm not a software programmer, so I don't even know what they've got available nowadays. Um, but my view would be probably not. Mm -hmm. um, I, my view would be that, like all of these channels, they need they need views, right? They need us viewing. They need us going to LinkedIn. They mm -hmm. need us seeing the adverts because mm -hmm. if everybody is working on different platforms and areas and not going back to LinkedIn then the advertisers are not getting their views. Right. And we'll find out what their views are like later this week when their announcement, the quarter results are out. Oh, that's this week. That's right. I forgot. Ooh. And, um, but you know, people are going to struggle. I think some social sites are going to be struggling if they, if they open stuff up and other people can use, you know, the content or, mm -hmm. you know, be able to do stuff outside of LinkedIn. Right. So, and as we know, you know, mobile is the is the go to place, and that's where they want us to spend our time. Yep, definitely. Kurt, what do you think? Well, I, I'm with Michael and uh, the thought that I, I don't really see LinkedIn opening up APIs, you know, back like it used to be a couple of years ago. I think that they've. Um, really continued to demonstrate uh, a, a walled garden sort of a approach to their business. And uh, certainly the eyeballs for advertising is one of the components that Michael mentioned. I think it's just uh, that sort of sense of, you know, controlling our member data and kind of the, the access to it really mm -hmm. is another big driver of it. So I, I don't, I don't see them doing it right. I, I, I think there would have to be a really compelling economic yeah. driver for it. And, you know, I just don't know where that's going to come from. So my, my bet would be don't hold your breath. Yeah, yeah I would. Um, I would definitely have to uh, agree with that. That really hasn't come up in in the conversations that I've had with, uh, with with LinkedIn. And that's just because, I mean, you know, I I, I agree with, with everything that, that Michael and Kurt had to say in in terms of the, the, the wall garden and and wanting people to have um, 
to, 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 you know, use LinkedIn as a space for everything. Social Ben says, but they have left open the newsfeed API. So that defeats the advertising argument. Surely, um, you know, sometimes it's like, why does LinkedIn do what LinkedIn does? I still don't know why it does some things. Um, I just know that, uh, you know, especially in working with 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 people links and just the limited access that we have to the api as opposed to um what we used to have which is be before my time there but i know that um that when linkedin shut down uh the um the uh api access to to most everything that they do it, it, it through the company for for a real uh, loop but they've recovered they've recovered very nicely and and their new product i've I won't get into that, but um, it's it's all great. But um, um, yeah, law to themselves. I know. You know, it's just you know you just kind of deal with things the, the the best you can when it comes to LinkedIn, when it comes to you know their API, or when it comes to you know just the uh, changes that come down the pike, and you just kind of go, what? You know that type of thing. Basically, you just gotta you know roll with the punches and just and. And just do the best you can, and, and and continue being a success. Great, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> that sounds like sounds a plan. good birthday boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, so I guess it's it's eleven fifty two. I don't see anything else coming down the pike. So I think uh, we'll. Oh wait a second. We'll Slack. Be, um, e boy. Hey, e boy. Mister Wonderful is here. He usually pops in and out. Uh, I'm assuming it's he. Uh, he. he he, he usually pops in and out every week. Um, so will Slack become the new LinkedIn? Um, I don't think so, just because it just doesn't have the uh, full functionality. I think that it could be used potentially with LinkedIn. Yeah, yet. Um, who knows where where it's going to go? Uh, Slack actually has a big um, advertising campaign going in the U.S. right now to get more users. I don't know if 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 they have that over in uh, Europe or in the U in the UK, but it's a very well done commercial too. I'm I'd be surprised if they don't start getting new users from that. Uh, Facebook wants to be the new LinkedIn. That's for sure, Ted. Yeah. That is definitely. Mm -hmm for sure linkedin has got a lot of uh has got a lot of uh companies nipping at its heels to either you know bite off the whole foot or to take little chunks off of the uh, edges basically and uh they 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 definitely better watch themselves without a doubt without a doubt so i tell you what um it's 11:53. Let's let everyone go a little early. So you know, if they're on the East Coast, they can uh, they can get into their lunches a little early, or wherever you're at, you got a couple of extra minutes. Again, we're here every Wednesday. SocialSellingWednesday.com is how you reach us, and uh, all, all of our um, or most of them, depending on how Blab feels about actually having re our replays ready, are available as well. It doesn't work every week, unfortunately. I guess that's why Blab is still in beta. So, um, <laughs> so that's it. Thanks everyone for joining. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you, Kurt, for for stopping by. Feel hey, thanks free for to join us. Man. Fun. Feel, feel free to join us whenever you want. We're here at the same time every Wednesday at uh, at 11 o'clock Eastern. Ted, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And um, thank you, Mr. Wonderful. Thanks, everyone, for coming by. And see you next week. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bob. Thank you.